Welcome to Writing Along. Today's episode is how to write a formal letter, how to write a good letter in general. First step, throw away your traditional concepts of what formal looks like. No one wants to receive a letter that is uh, littered with words that you wouldn't normally use, all right, that isn't understandable. The entire idea of a formal letter is formally respecting the person who will be receiving it, uh, which in case, keep in mind you don't have to pretend here, okay? You can write a brilliant and a well-communicated letter without having to abide by any strict formats or anything like that. Uh, believe it or not, there, there, no, there's, there's like no template you've got to follow. And letter writing is, it's an art in itself, right? It was pretty much the only really effective way of uh, communication over long distances and such. Uh, you weren't just calling your friends on the uh, the telephone in the 1800s, you know, like in prior. Uh, you might have, but come on. It's something that definitely left an impact. It's left a legacy on us as a species in general. And it's not really forgotten completely, not consciously, all right? Some of it's passed down. Uh, your great, great grandparents wrote letters and... Uh, maybe you write them too. That's the thing. It's it's not dead. Like re letter writing isn't gone. You can go to your local post office. Uh, you can just walk down the street and drop off your sign and enclosed letter. And uh, most people don't even know how to buy stamps, but you figure it out because you're smart and you get your letters sent out. You know, it's still a thing. And some might say it's transferred over to email. So guess what? Uh, use it for email too. Uh, these these tips still apply. It's really just how to send a formal message and what that means. All it really is, is paying mind to the person who is the recipient, uh, taking them into consideration. So essentially, if, you're, if you have something to tell someone and you're trying to be really uh, uh, courteous about it and such and very, oh, I want to uh, send this in an elegant manner. All right, don't spend 50 pages trying to be elegant. That's quite the opposite, right? Don't uh, consult a thesaurus when... Uh, the few hundred words that you use on a daily basis are, are good enough, okay? I mean, a formal letter could be a couple a couple sentences, you know? One thing you do want to do is um, just be wary of how it looks, too, visually. Uh, formally, pretty you know nice things to look at are pretty familiar, in a sense. And you're not... This isn't going to be your avant-garde piece, all right? Uh, no, don't capitalize some letters and lowercase some letters and it all means something. You know, don't try to use a, a henceforth and heretofore and all, all the thus. You know, if you don't use thus on a daily basis, you should. It's not a bad word. Try incorporating it in your vocabulary. But if you don't, don't include it in your letter. It, it's going to come off. First of all, as inauthentic, if you're trying to do that, if you're trying to come from a place where it's not really you. And no, it's not the cliche, uh, be yourself in a formal letter because maybe yourself is making something up, right? So uh, be counterintuitive there if you have to. Just be aware. A good letter is one that is understood. A formal letter is not just one that's understood, but it's one that really respects and takes into consideration, uh, takes into consideration their time, who they are as a person, and overall is appreciative of them for even taking the time out of their lives uh, to find a letter opener. Who has one now, right? Are they ripping it open? And <laughs> come on, like you gotta really consider the weight of it again. And if you're just writing an email and you just want to know how to send a formal message, same principle applies. Always preface it by. You could state this directly if you want. If you don't feel comfortable or uh, confident in conveying these things just through uh, the formatting and the way you write, let's say you're not where you want to be as a writer yet, then go ahead and start your letter, okay, with, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time and you don't got to say, uh, my warmest compensation of emotional response in reactance to your mental correspondence with my, just stop stop yourself 
and save yourself, save everyone the time, and use words that you know, and if you use them confidently, because you're not, you would be unconfident if you were using words that you didn't know, all right, if you were uh, hunched over uh, synonyms, just trying to figure out, how do I, how do I phrase this, how do I phrase that, how do I make this seem formal, it's going to be very shaky, and it's going to be quite the opposite of what you intended, because the reader is going to read and just realize, oh, this word's not used right, one word, and the whole thing's out the window, all right, everything you attempted to do is gone, so if you want to be effective, be not only just concise, but be very authentic in the way you deliver your message, the way you would speak to someone you care about in your life, all right? You don't, I, I'm sure you're not, uh, not, not everyone in your family's a, a senator or a president of a country, you know, like, but there are certain people in your life, family, friends, whoever, just someone who, if you were speaking to, you would be pretty, pretty courteous of them. You know, you'd, you have some kind of respect for them. Okay. And write your letter like you're talking to them. It's really as simple as that. And any more that you try to incorporate into it is deviating from what otherwise is a very accomplishable task. Okay. Now, formality isn't just defined by the diction, the word choice. It's not just defined by uh, how many semicolons you use. If you don't use semicolons on a regular basis, again, um, consider it pretty great tools, uh, pretty fun and effective to use. I, I don't regret knowing how to use them, and you won't either. So try it, you know. Don't knock it, but if you're not doing it on a daily basis yet right now, forget it. All right, don't start your letter with a uh, quote from a <laughs> Don't quote James Joyce, you know, like some literary figure. It's just don't quote a president. Don't, not if you're not feeling it, not if it's not something you would normally do. Generally, we appreciate people who are being very, uh, very forthright, very honest with themselves. Okay, I'm sure you would have, what would you appreciate? A answer, really. Someone who's just straight up lying to your face? Or someone who's really, even if they're not giving you something valuable, even if they're just being there, someone who's just talking like they normally would, you know, just being, being the person they are, whether you like them or don't like them. Uh, which would you rather take? You know, which would you rather listen to? The one who, again, just a complete facade, just nothing, everything out of their mouth isn't true. Or someone who's being them and doesn't really have anything to hide as far as the person they are, as far as their personality and such, and what they're trying to deliver and communicate to you. Uh, it doesn't mean that every message you send is going to be always good news either, right? or even just something. It's not always going to be interesting, okay? Uh, you're not going to tell them that you just got uh, elected or, you know, like you're you've won the lottery or they've won the lot, you know, something nonsensical. Like it's not always that, but guess what? If you're very honest in your message, in your letter, that's going to go a long way. That's going to mean more than just the complete utter opposite of them. And you realize now that it doesn't have to be so difficult. There's a little less pressure you can put on yourself here. If you need to write a formal letter, a formal message, email, anything at all, all you have to do, again, respect the person who's receiving it. Really, I'm not kidding. Talk to them and put your words like, again, you'd be talking to someone that, that matters. Generally, you're not trying to uh, shield away any information from them. You're not trying to, you're not belittling them. That's a big one too, okay? Uh, that's. It's very trashy. It's very, um, it, it, it doesn't like work in any context. It just, it's self-destructive. Okay, to belittle someone that you're communicating to. 
So watch out if you're doing that in your letter, in your message or anything. In fact, go back, you know, look over it. If you've missed any of these things, if you try to be too complicated, okay, if you try to be, uh, use words that don't really align with your regular vocabulary or you're trying to uh, present yourself in a way that doesn't really uh, reflect you, uh, let, let that letter speak to you then. And just kind of look over what you wrote and let it talk back to you like, oh, that's, man, that's something I got to work on myself. You know, what am I wasting my time doing this for you know if I'm doing this here in a letter I must be doing it elsewhere and again it, it's all very full circle it, it does come back uh, writing isn't just some separate skill okay writing formally it's gonna teach you a lot it's gonna do a lot for you you'd be surprised the kinds of responses you'd get it's people you wouldn't expect the responses for when you write formally to them give them a shot all right so if you haven't already, check out How to Write a Book in 30 Days, 10-part guide. Yeah, you write a letter, but write a book too, all right? You can do it. It's your reminder that you're completely capable of it. Check it out at writingalong.com. Completely free, by the way. And I'll see you around. See you in the next episode.